So we're going to make this one a, a quick one. Um, I want to go over what a proper flyback diode is. Uh, and the reason I want to talk about this is because it, it'll save relay contacts and stuff. Folks that uh, use relays for very various different things in their uh, electrical systems on their cars, electric fans, uh, you know, vacuum pumps, uh, lighting. Um, you're going to use a relay for any number of those things. Um, this is also a relay, as you guys might recognize. It looks kind of like a Ford starter solenoid. It is. Uh, it's. It's all it is is a large. This is a continuous duty uh, relay, um, but it's. It's a large relay. Is all it is. More like a contactor almost. Um, but I want to go over what flyback is, and um, and uh, what you do to eliminate it. And I'm going to demonstrate. I've got a car battery sitting here uh, that. Uh, I'm going to show you what flyback is and and how to eliminate it and and why it's better for your uh, contacts for the control relay, what I would call a control relay that's uh, piloting this or whatever's driving this, whether it's something solid state or uh, a key switch or a, a micro switch, whatever you have driving your your relay, um, you want to eliminate flyback, and I'm going to show you why. All right, so this is going to be a demonstration of flyback. Uh, negative hooked up, going to the coil. I do not have the flyback diode. I'll explain what that is in a second in the circuit. So I simply, it's real simple. I'm sure most of you guys, if you're a car guy watching this, you understand what this is. I've got the uh, my test leads hooked up to the coil, which drives this relay. And uh, all I'm going to do is, is touch this to the battery. A real simple thing. Imagine that this is a switch. Um, you can see, see the sparking that's going on there? That is what will eventually kill a pilot relay or a smaller relay or a switch of any kind, something that cycles a lot. Um, that arcing uh, burns up the contacts. In this case, I don't actually have physical contacts here. But it's going to do that no matter what speed. And, and the phenomenon that you're looking at here is what's called flyback. And it's the same principle that a, that a coil works on in your car. So, you know, you guys know you charge up your coil, you know, it removes the negative side of it. And when it does it, you get this big, you get this big discharge. That's actually flyback. Um, so uh, I'm going to show you how we eliminate this. And it's really very simple how this works. Um, I'm going to take a test lead, which I've got uh, right here. Okay, and I'm going to hook this test lead up so you can just see there's a diode in here. And if you don't know how a diode works, you can look it up, but uh, it's like a check valve for electricity. That's the best way to explain it, right? Um, and if you know anything about electronics, the silver side on a diode, that's always going to be the, the back check side. So the flow cannot go that direction. It can only go this direction. So if I have my positive hooked up here, I can't have any energy go this direction. But if I have stored energy here, if I have stored energy inside this coil, or this coil is charged, when I open up the contact of the switch that's controlling it, that flyback is simply going to short itself to the coil, and it'll dissipate very quickly. Um, and it it does that it does that by collapsing the field that's in here, uh, rather than rather than that energy turning into a big old spark over here. Um, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to hook it up to the post there. So now my diode is in circuit and watch the difference here. Look at that. No spark, nothing, no spark at all. Nothing detectable, right? That's flyback. Disconnect the flyback. Sparks. Always run a flyback diode. There, there are some special exceptions to that with different electronics and things, but in general, with those little Bosch style 30 amp relays, run a flyback diode. Um, with these relays, run a flyback diode. Uh, it, it's real simple. These are real easy to get. These are cheap ones, actually. I think I got them on Amazon, you know. Um, real standard these are in the electronics world 1n4001 or 1n4003 
or uh, you know all these numbers that you see on here these are the most common diodes you'll find in the electronic world um, pretty much don't worry too much it doesn't need to be a real high wattage diode it's not there's not a ton of energy there um, uh, I think I forget what I used on this one if it's a 1000 one it's, I think it's a Scotchkey diode I think I used I think I used a 5817 um, higher voltage rating is good especially with flyback I think I just used a 20 volt one though um, so um, you don't you can use a rectifier diode but uh, I wouldn't Scotchkey diodes probably the right thing to use here uh, well yeah, you could probably use a rectifier diode. For this, it's not going to make any difference. It's not going to make any difference what you what you what you're using here. But anyways, that's just a real quick quickie on uh, what a flyback diode is. So it, it goes it goes in between your coil, and uh, you always want to make sure that uh, that the silver side or the check side of the diode is on the positive side. That way, you don't have a short. You don't want a dead short to negative. If I flip this diode around. I'm going to have a dead short to negative when I turn it on. You don't want that. Or just a dead short, not a dead short to negative. Um, so uh, always run a flyback diode. That'll save your switch, your coolant temperature switch for your fans, whatever. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a big deal. And I don't know why, you know, these things should have these things integrated by now, I would think. But they don't for whatever reason. Probably just to save a couple bucks. Um, but, uh, that's, that's, a like a 101 thing in the electronics engineering world.